I'm a pretty big fan and advocate of dividend growth investing, and if you're watching this channel, you're probably in a, in a similar position as me. And this preference for dividends is not uh, driven by emotions, but rather the simple cold hard facts. Dividend growth investing has excellent risk-adjusted returns. Some long-term data like this dating back to 1973 even indicates that dividend growth investing outperforms the general market with less volatility. But of course, now in 2023, we are entering into a new economic cycle where the Fed is aggressively raising interest rates. And right now, the US one-year treasury bill is yielding 5%. If we look back over the past five years, this is the highest it's been for quite a while, and this has a direct effect on stocks and dividend investing. And that leaves people to ask questions like this, Help me understand why anybody would buy dividend stocks paying 3% when you get a risk-free rate of over 5%. So today we're going to try and answer this question and see whether or not dividend investing is still worth it when interest rates are at a pretty high level. If you guys enjoyed the video, I always appreciate a like, subscribing, but let's do this. Warren Buffett has a famous quote about interest rates. And it goes, interest rates are to asset prices, but gravity is to the apple. When there are low interest rates, there is very low gravitational pull on asset prices. So the primary way that high interest rates directly affect stock prices is known as the risk-free rate. So for example, before late 2022, the risk-free rate, the interest rate, was near zero for a pretty long time. So putting this on a chart, that means that the risk-free return was somewhere in this location, essentially nothing. So in order to generate any level of return, you need to go up the risk scale. So as you go up this chart, you get to stuff like municipal bonds. These are still very low risk and the return is pretty minimal. As you keep going, you get to things like corporate bonds, a bit more risky, a bit more return. And ultimately you get to the stock market, things like dividend stocks, and then eventually, uh, speculative growth stocks like what's found in the ARK Innovation Fund, and you can even continue this to things like Bitcoin. But when interest rates go up, especially this dramatically, the risk-free return becomes way more competitive. So putting this visually, the new risk-free return is something like up here. Instead of a measly 1%, we're talking more like 4%. That sounds way more compelling. So when you're hanging out over here, gaining 4%, experiencing zero risk, for these other assets to tempt you away from this location, the return has to either be greater, so move up on the chart, or the risk has to come down. And as we saw, right now you can buy a one-year treasury bond and lock in a 5% yield. SCHD, on the other hand, is only yielding 3.33% right now, and of course you have to contend with this bear market and the price which is all over the place. So compared to when interest rates were less, SCHD is just not as attractive as it once was. Now you guys might be asking, okay, but what about the dividend growth component? Because unlike with bonds, the dividends grow over time. So how does that affect the final outcome? Well, this article here on SCHD versus treasuries essentially answers the question for us. So as we established, SCHD at the current moment has a much lower yield than that of treasuries. It's 4.793% versus 3.3%. But will dividend growth make up the difference? So on Seeking Alpha, the annual growth rate of SCHD's dividend is almost 14% annually. So if its dividend were to grow by 13.9% over the course of the next year, the dividend would rise to $2.9 cents per share up from two dollars 56 cents per share and that would represent a yield of 3.79 percent which is still far less than the 4.793 percent you can nail down in one year treasury bill so what happens if you go to two years out so right now the two-year treasury has a yield of 4.6 percent if SCHD was to continue to raise its dividend by 13.9%, in the second year, the dividend would rise to $3.03 .03 per share. Based on today's price of SCHD, that would represent an annual yield of 3.93%, still far less than the 4.6% in a two-year treasury note. And they do this one more time in a three-year time frame, and this is where the dividends finally catch up. But an important side note here is that you're exposing yourself to a ton more risk 
with dividend stocks when compared to the risk-free return. And to just match that return after three years doesn't really sound that convincing. Now, if you come back to this original post where the guy was asking why invest in dividend stocks when you get a much higher yielding bond, the top rate response is that yes, the yield is less. However, because of the assumed risk, you have the potential of additional growth and thus the total return can be much higher than that of the yield of a treasury right now. So the total return of something like SCHD over the long term is an annual rate of over 13%, which is much higher than any treasury, and that's the compensation for the additional risk level. So even though the risk-free return is significantly higher than it was just one year ago, you still are being compensated for the extra risk you assume when investing in dividend stocks, although it's by no means as attractive as it was when the risk-free return was less. Now, if you remember back to the Warren Buffett quote, he said that interest rates are like gravity when it comes to stock valuations. And for anybody that's been investing this past year, we're all pretty familiar with this. The stock market did not have good returns when interest rates were being raised. So that's another factor that can work against dividend stocks when the risk-free return is higher because the historical rate of return might be less during this time. And if that's true, that shifts their value downward, making them even less attractive in this new environment. Although I do want to mention that this correlation between rising interest rates and falling stock market prices isn't as firm as you might initially think. So right here we have data on the Fed rate hike cycle going all the way back to the 90s. And this is the corresponding performance during that cycle of these various indexes. And as you can tell, only during one of these, the dot-com crash, did equities actually have a negative time period. During most of these rate hike cycles, like back in the late 90s, the return of equities was very strong and well outpaced that of treasuries. So to sum all this up, as the risk-free rate increases, all other investments are comparatively less attractive. I mean, put simply, why would you buy SCHD yielding 3.3% when a treasury is 5%? As we saw, dividends do grow over time, but that in and of itself doesn't fully compensate for the difference. The only time you would venture up this risk curve while the risk-free rate is so attractive is if the return and risk ratio still make it worth it. And historically, with SCHD, the annual return has been well above treasuries, even at their current level. So if you want my opinion, dividend stocks are still good investments, although not quite as phenomenal as they were a couple of years ago. And if you want to lock in a 4-5% risk-free rate, there is nothing wrong with that. But of course, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.